Hi everyone, and I hope you are well. Today I want to talk about one of the most typical questions I receive. Lightroom or Capture One, which is the best and what should I use for my Fujifilm uh, RAW files? A few days ago I took a straw poll on Instagram asking which software are you using to edit your Fuji photos and why? First of all, thank you all guys uh, for submitting your answers, very much appreciated. I picked some of them to share with you, just to give you an overview of what are preferences and aspects uh, that different photographers consider being important. Okay, let's have a look at a few comments I received. Capture One render Fuji RAW files better and make them sharper. Capture One uh, makes a better job with Fuji files, uh, it has a ton of profiles for lenses and I feel more comfortable with it. Lightroom, I use Adobe programs in college, it's familiar and works uh, well enough. Lightroom, honestly, it was a random choice at the beginning, but now I can say that's intuitive. Lightroom, better all rounder, HDR, panorama, organizing images, but love capture one look. Uh, this one is from my friend Robert. Check out his work, he's an amazing photographer. So Robert says, uh, Lightroom, I am just investing in its architecture and file structure. I like the interface of Lightroom, the connection to Photoshop, especially relative to setting up smart layers uh, and the sharpening algorithm and the new color controls. I suppose if I had started on Capture One, I might have gone that route, but I just get befuddled in there and cannot make my workflow as seamless as when in Lightroom. A bunch more. Uh, Lightroom, Capture One might process Fuji files better, but I prefer the interface of Lightroom. Capture One, in my opinion, the only problem of Capture One could be the impossibility to merge photos, panorama. And the last one, Lightroom is just cheaper. Okay, I can summarize all these answers in uh, three distinct groups. Uh, uh, the workflow preferences, raw processing and price. Many factors can influence uh, uh, the choice of which software to use. And in this episode, I'm going to focus on one of these aspects, raw processing trying to debunk a couple of myths and cliché that are too often associated with these two popular software. Or better, we are going to understand what are the actual differences that define the base image look of each software and set them apart. To do that, we are going to look at things like profile or basic characteristics, uh, basic tone controls, differences and sharpening. Okay, let's jump right into the comparison. Once you imported your images, Lightroom and Capture One automatically apply an ICC profile based on the camera model. Lightroom has just a drop down menu called Profile with the Adobe Color Profile selected by default. You can choose other Adobe profiles from the list. It helps the computer to define the, the color, the base color. In Capture One, we have a similar function the recommended the default ICC Color Profile and an appropriate tone curve setting for the raw image files from recognized camera models. I think many people overlook this tool, but it's a great way to sort of set the foundation for how the application handles color. So the really fun part about this base model is the curve, and this is the part that many photographers don't realize. Capture One sets the default value to Auto, but if we click on the drop-down menu, we have a list of many profiles. Now, depending on your camera, this list might be a little different, except for these default curves provided by Capture One. And this gives you a starting point for your color and contrast work. By selecting the different film profile, you will have a different result in terms of contrast and colors. Same thing with Lightroom. Selecting this icon Profile Browser, you get access to the Fujifilm simulations. Too often this setting gets overlooked in both applications and it's really handy. So besides the completely different process engines, uh, that's one of the primary reasons uh, comparing the same image important in Lightroom and Capture One, you get different starting results. Taking this into account, before making any further consideration, I'm going to select the same Fujifilm simulation on both software. And I'm going to choose uh, the Fujifilm Pro negative standard, which works uh, most of the time as a, a perfect starting point for developing my photos. But it depends on the image and what's in the file. Different settings of this parameter can transform the interaction we have with the tone sliders. Now, let's put the images side by side. And guess what? 
If we have a closer look at the images uh, using the same profile or curve on both software, the colors and contrast look indistinguishable. And to be honest, I'm not surprised since these color and tone settings define the overall look of the camera. So this is the primary reason you can have a different base look after the import. We find the similar tone control sliders for both software. Lightroom grouped them into the basic panel, whereas Capture One uses separated tools, uh, the base characteristics, uh, the exposure, high dynamic range, the haze and clarity tool, all located under the exposure tool tab. Even though the names are more or less identical, what makes them slightly different is the brightness range levels on which they work. And even more important, how differently the single controls interact with colors. Each software has a proprietary secret sauce that determines uh, its distinctive look. It's amazing how much you can do, tonally speaking, with just exposure and high dynamic range panels. I found no essential differences in terms of shadows or highlights recovery. They are both equal in performance. They simply work differently and the raw processing they have is absolutely outstanding. To give you an idea of the distinct flavor, I'm going to select the quick edit auto button on both and you should see what I mean. It will work on exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, blacks, whites, vibrance, and also saturation. And whereas Lightroom has a fixed auto mode, with Capture One you can customize which parameters to put into the auto adjust tool equation. As we will soon see, Lightroom and Capture One apply some sharpening and noise reduction to the raw file automatically, so I put to zero all the sliders playing from the same level as much as we can. Now I want to uh, show you some differences in how the different sliders work uh, on both software. I'm going to make some crazy adjustments uh, just for example. So remember, I will not make a proper edit. It's just to show you what these tools uh, are doing. Okay, let's have a look at the exposure slider. I'm going to use a reference black and white gradient just to know which area the slider is affecting. Also, the histogram uh, is a good indicator to look at. Capture One has a shorter range of exposure up to four stops rather than Lightroom, which has five stops of compensation. Now, let's see a practical example of an image. Yeah, this example confirms uh, what we have already seen with the black and white gradient. A quick tip, a common place is to consider the exposure slider as the same thing as uh, changing the exposure in the camera, but it's not. For instance, these two images are four stops difference. Here we have uh, blown out uh, highlights. I'm gonna pull the highlights slider all the way down, trying to recover some details. I'm gonna reduce uh, the whites as well, but some areas uh, are flat with no detail. Let's grab the underexposed shot. And I'm going to bring the exposure all the way up. Now I'm gonna pull down the highlights and whites and boom. I have all the details back. So the exposure slider is not linear. It applies some sort of compression. You can increase it a lot without blowing out the highlights. It's a very basic example, but you get it. Something interesting is also the different behavior of the contrast slider in Capture One. When pulling down, it doesn't flat the image like Lightroom. I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing, but this is another example of how differently the two software work under the hood. A similar thing happens when you crank the slider up to 50. The change uh, affects the colors uh, of the image diversely. If we look at the histogram, dragging the slider to the right, uh, the histogram partially reveals uh, where lies the difference. I guess Capture One off-centered the tonality about which dark and bright parts of the image are stretched or are narrowed during a contrast change. Can you see it? In Lightroom, the mid-gray stripe remains uh, in the center, whereas in Capture One, the histogram shows the threshold around uh, here. Actually, it would be quite nice to have a sort of pivot change as in some video editors to adjust the value based on the image. For instance, darker images may require a lower pivot value to avoid crushing the shadows too much when stretching image contrast while lighter images may benefit from a higher pivot value to increase shadows density adequately.
Capture One has an additional slider, the brightness slider. It deals with the middle of the histogram, just with the midtones. I found this control very handy on different occasions. A quick look compared with the exposure slider, the effect is different, very pleasant and less extreme. Whereas the exposure controls brightens or darkens the whole tonal range, the brightness is not crunching the highlights so much because it's not affecting them so much. It's mostly affecting the midtones. And now we have the high dynamic range tool in Capture One, which features uh, the same sliders we see in Lightroom. And to avoid any confusion, we are not talking about creating HDR photo. It can be a bit uh, of a misnomer. This tool is just about fine tuning high dynamic range. In other words, uh, recovering a shadow area detail, recovery highlight details area, that kind of stuff. Generally, highlights and shadows work uh, in tandem and whites and blacks work in tandem as well. I'm gonna start with the highlights slider. You can see how differently it works in Lightroom than Capture One. Look at the histogram. The major difference is in the brightness range they affect. In Lightroom, we have a decent shift of the low mids. Let's see with a proper image. The brightness range that the slider affects is much wider in Lightroom. It reduces more tones on the waterfall, whereas in Capture One, the change affects just the sky. And we have the opposite result with the shadow slider. The two software affect a different brightness range. So uh, let's have a look at the adjustments applied to the same image. The result is quite different and the image looks uh, crunchier in Capture One. For instance, if I wanted to get a similar result in Lightroom, I should work differently and uh, applying other adjustments like increasing the blacks and the clarity, like that. So moving the same available tools for an equal amount, uh, we will end up with different results. The white slider in Lightroom is a bit more aggressive. It affects more midtones than Capture One does and the histogram clarifies the difference. See it? And it's the same thing with the blacks slider. The one in Capture One has a more focused blacks area, whereas the same slider in Lightroom has a wider range and it has a softer roll off into the shadows area. Lightroom and Capture One both provide wonderful results. It's with its flavor. And even though I love both software, something is intriguing about the look achievable in Capture One right out of the box, just with very few adjustments. Okay, we have reached the hot topic, the sharpening algorithm. Here lies the essence of why one should choose one software over the other. Behind these debates lies a tremendous amount of waste, and that's definitely not the only factor to consider, actually. But this aspect is a recurring topic, especially between Fujifilm users. To be honest, Lightroom has never impressed me with the quality of sharpening of my rough files. Capture One shows a better raw algorithm than Lightroom, or at least it can handle the X-Trans sensor files better by introducing no warming artifacts. Okay, that's true, but is Lightroom so bad? Adobe introduced the Enhance Details function a while ago, a brand new the mosaic algorithm that analyzes and enhances the image to better resolve fine details and fix issues like the warming effect and false colors. To access the Enhance Details option inside of Adobe Lightroom, simply right click on any raw file and you will see it in the pop up menu. Or once you select the image you want to convert, go to the top menu, photo and enhance the details. Before making the comparison Lightroom versus Capture One, let's see the differences between the original rough file and the enhanced version saved by Lightroom as DNG. So let's bring the noise reduction and the mount sliders to zero. And to see the difference, you want to zoom into your image, most often to a near pixel level. That's why I'm zooming quite a lot at about 300, 400%. Let's have a look at the first image. The pixels are more defined in the enhanced version. What I can see is that the enhanced details uh, not only sharpens uh, edge pixels uh, and resolves details, but also separates uh, color textures. 
By inspecting the grass, the enhanced version provides a wonderful detail rendition, a better color separation, and I would say more vivid colors overall. Another example with foliage, trees, rocks. As before, we can see an extra clarity and definition on the foliage and the increased sharpness of rock edges and overall details. Now I'm going to exaggerate the amount of value to make more obvious the difference between the two versions. The original rough file shows the well-known wormy issue, especially in the more flat areas like the sky or the waterfall, whereas the enhanced version looks clearer and doesn't present the annoying issue. Anyway guys, if you find yourself cranking the levels at these values, you are probably doing something wrong with the input sharpening. I filmed a long in-depth video here on YouTube where I discussed the different sharpening stages for an image. Okay, let's compare Lightroom with Capture One. The difference between the original RAW file in Lightroom and the same one opened with Capture One is huge. Capture One, we have gorgeous fine details, a better micro contrast, and of course, no wormy issues at all. Now I want to show you something very interesting. I'm going to choose this image, which comes from a bracketing series. Here I expose for the shadows, so the sky looks overexposed. I know it's an extreme example, but I would like to direct your attention to this specific area where the trees are backlighted. Can you see the purple fringing on the original rough file Lightroom and here in Capture One? Let me show you the announced version. The enhanced details made an excellent job. It took care of these issues and spit out a higher quality file. Besides having improved the overall details, it completely fixed the purple fringing on the trees. Even dragging the, the fringe slider all the way up in Capture One, I'm not able to achieve a similar results, but Capture One is just about there. This benefit is quite important when you have to blend multiple exposures in Photoshop to lower dramatically the chance to have some unpleasant blending issues on the edges. There are a couple of downsides though. The first one is that the enhanced details features take a bit of time to render and so it's not something you are going to apply to your entire photo archive. The second one is when you apply the enhanced details, Lightroom creates an additional DNG raw file, so make sure to account for that extra hard drive space if you plan to apply it to many files. You might find that you prefer the enhanced images as a general rule, or you might only use these features now and then. I think that the enhanced details is a useful tool to have in your arsenal for those times when you really need it. If your final output is uh, to social media, don't dwell on it there will be no noticeable difference uh, with or without enhanced details applied. I also want to address the fact that the enhanced result is more than a baseline comparison of a raw processing algorithm. It's an additional process that's applied after importing the raw files into Adobe Lightroom. So not relying on enhanced details, Capture One is hands down far superior to Lightroom at handling Fuji raw files. So which one to choose? I like both. Even though these two software might be similar in many respects, they have crucial and unique differences like the outstanding color controls, layers and tethering in Capture One or the Merge HDR and Panorama function in Lightroom, and many others I didn't mention in this video. And being different doesn't mean better or worse. I would say there is no real winner, that either choice might be the right one depending on your needs. Many other factors can influence uh, which software to choose, uh, and we can't limit the choice to just what we discussed in this video. If you want to try Capture One, I put the link in the description below to download a free 30-day trial, a fully free version to play with. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me, and let me know here in the comments uh, which software do you prefer, which one are you using, and why. And if you have any questions, uh, I'll try my best to answer them. So I hope you enjoy this comparison. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!